So let me go and just show you a few uh, things that you can do. Uh, many kits have lines that actually are drawn right against the CO2 cartridge housing. So I'm just going to click the line tool. I want you to pay close attention to your construction line setting. So I'm going to click on line. If for some reason you notice this is selected, please unselect it. Let's try that again. Line tool. I'm going to go ahead and click right here on the back. I'm going to move forward. And once again, that number was 65. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. There we go. And we also know that whenever we draw a line, we can continue drawing more lines. If we ever want to change the value of a line, we can always double click on the dimension. And in this case, if I realized, oops, that should have been 67, I'll change it to 67. I'll hit enter and it just now becomes the correct length. Um, sometimes kids are looking for either locations um, or they're looking for uh, a good starting point. They're just not really sure where to begin. So let's go ahead and start off with this tool here, which is actually a point that we can use and actually put in place and actually dimension it. So let me click on this point tool. Let me just give you an example of how this could work for you. Sometimes students will be drawing arcs or curves and as the arc starts to change they want to know where that location is. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point, just a random point, somewhere over here. So you know that you have an arc that starts here, you're just not sure where it ends. So you can put this point here and this tool becomes very powerful with the dimension tool. So I'm going to click once and then on the bottom twice. And I'm first going to find with my ruler where this arc ends. Let's just say this arc does end at 35. I'm going to hit enter. And then let's say that from the back of the car, this arc happens to end at 120. So as you can see here, I'm showing you a very simple trick on how to find certain locations of where things like lines turn into arcs or arcs turn into other arcs or arcs turn into curves. This is a good way to plot these points out. Now some kids don't have to do this, but some kids find this is very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and use the arc tool. And I can click here and now I'm very confident that this is going to end here and then that this is going to look a little bit more like this according to my drawing. So once again a very powerful tool. A uh, question I get a lot is kids knowing where this location should be. So I'm going to go back to using one other option. I have point. I'm also going to change this to line. And once again I'm going to change it to construction. Um, the distance from here to here is six but some students have a much higher uh, car body. Uh, if you look at A6 in your front view, Axel 6, some of you have a number that you've dimensioned. Let's just say this number is 12 on my drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 12. I'm going to hit enter. So now that I have a location of where my car body is in relation to that front axle, this once again can make it easier for me to, to grab, for example, a point, reposition this point, um, I'm going to do something rather um, odd here, but just to make it work, you can see I can move this point, and actually I'm actually right where I am in, in relation to where I did this on my drawing. So let's check a few things before we wrap this up. I'm going to go ahead and hit the line tool, and I'm going to hit the construction line, and here's one way to check that something is actually legal. Let's see if this is truly 14 millimeters or more. So I'm going to click once. I'm just going to move this line in the direction I want to measure. I'm just going to type in 14, which I know is a minimum for DB7. And I think we both can see that this does not meet specifications. So I have some options. I can either delete and redraw this line, or excuse me, arc, or I can maybe click on the arc. Let's see, can it be moved? Okay, I can bend it, but you can see it's not actually working the way I want it to work. So sometimes I tell students is you can try to do what I'm doing here, which is bending the arc, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to delete it. Now if it were a spline, I could probably move some points. In this case, I'm just going to delete that, redraw it, start point, end point, and now that I have something as a reference, I can use it. So as you can see here, I can get fairly close. I'm not going to get too close, but I can get fairly close to that 14 and make sure that I'm staying legal. Let's just leave it like that for now. Now that becomes a construction line. Obviously that's an issue, so watch this. I hit my escape key a few times. If I ever click on a construction line and I want to change it to an object line, I can just click right here on the construction line icon 
and change it now to an object line. Another great tool, and we'll stop with this last step, is that you can use something called inspect, measure, and we can actually measure the distance between areas. For example, I can click here, then I can click somewhere here, and this does and doesn't sometimes work as you can see here. You can see here that I'm getting something rather funny here in terms of what's happening here. So sometimes it's a matter of just using what works. Measuring does work. I have noticed that when we click on points, for example, from here to here, that becomes very accurate. But since there was no point on the other side of that arc, it was having trouble identifying what I actually wanted. So you can see here things have gone a little wonky on me. I'm going to go ahead and redraw that arc, make sure the construction line is off. Let's put that arc back where I originally had it. And I'm just going to leave it kind of like this for now. So you have to experiment a little bit with construction lines and or that inspect measure tool to make sure that you are drawing something that is truly to specifications. Dimension tool also works great. Sometimes students will use this tool to simply measure some of these other specs. For example, click once, click twice. Some students will use tools like this if they have two points that they can use to dimension and just check for accuracy.